Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, I'm Alex. This is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, Chuck Farnham, who normally has a full set of teeth, but you're missing one right now. What happened with that? One? You look hey. like you look like a very extreme David Letterman. It's like. COVID, during COVID, I had COVID, and then the tooth fell out. Okay. And I looked at getting the tooth replaced, and I don't know. Okay. I couldn't get straight answers, and they were just kind of being weird to me, and so oh, I let it ride for a bit. And They said, you're the kind of person, because of your weight, that looks good toothless. You know? Yeah, I mean... Yeah. You know, they got yeah, the long well, hair. You, you, you the, can the, go get the I, you can go get the implants, right? You know, but I know two people who've had their implants fall out. Really, I have I have three implants and they're all fine. Yeah, I know. I as a matter of fact, I have a friend whose implant fell out last week. Another one. It's like, do these things really work? Do they not they work? Might have been, it might have been a bad... How much of a problem no, is I've, it? I've had uh, implants. I have three implants in my mouth, and all three of them are fine. Yeah. Never had a problem. Yeah, I don't know. I, so, you know, almost, you know, when when a majority of your friends know how it happened, mm -hmm. people don't ask, how'd you lose your tooth anymore? Yeah. So, nobody cares. Well, how'd you get the black eye? It's not actually black. It, well, it, it is black, but it's those circles that you get under your eyes when you get older. Yeah. I have one that after I got eye surgery I started getting this this would happen what eye surgery so, what well I got uh, uh, contact or uh, implants implant well you'd be talking uh, about the uh, yeah the uh, 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 you know where they put the lens the new lens in there yeah 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 they took the old lens out put the new lens in I which both, by the way both my eyes were it's, done it's awesome that's the greatest thing I ever uh, man that shoot laser in your eye oh a laser oh, oh this oh, I did the thing the corneal transplant Plant. They it, oh. they removed the, the cornea and put in a new lens. Yeah, they and, ripped yeah. out my lens. They burned the lens out, and then they slide a new lens in with these lasers. Oh, oh really? That was awesome. No, I, that's and it only takes it takes like maybe a, maybe a minute. It was quick. Wow. Okay. And now I don't need glasses to uh, drive or anything, yeah. but. I need them to read. So. Let me, let but me I can see you. Let um, me ask you a question here, and this is something we haven't talked about, I think, since whenever it happened. At one point, there was somebody, and I think it was our music director, who wanted to get rid of me. And so he prevailed upon you to throw the show. Do you remember that? No. How can I throw something I barely understood? Well, no, but <laughs> like, I mean, what are you going to tell me to do? This was a guy who, who decided he didn't like me being on the air there. He didn't like what I was doing because it wasn't music, okay? And that he went No, it to, definitely wasn't music. Yeah, and he went to you and asked you to kind of do things that would throw the show, that would make it have I, problems. I don't remember any of I that. Remember, I remember... I remember it, yeah. Would somebody say something to you about it? I, I don't I, even know how I, I think would throw I think the show. I think I actually heard about it from you, you because you came to me so. and you I said I would have I I would have if somebody would have asked me to do that a I would have said no b I would have told you because well you I know, think that's we exactly together. I think that's exactly what you did you told me I, I don't I don't remember that happening but he didn't have to work but, uh, he didn't have to work very hard because I mean were, I don't know how how would we throw the show. Yeah, I just. Thought, I mean, we we're already doing enough stuff to get the cops there about once a month. So yeah, you know, I I just don't understand why they took that show off because really, people to this day talk about that show. You know, oh, all the time. It was such a uh, from the stuff I've been describing with Chuck in the past and the stunts he did. 
It was very special. You know? I was at a I was at a uh, train museum in Carson City uh, about a month ago, mm -hmm. and these people from San Francisco came up and and uh, I said, oh yeah, I, I did some radio stuff in San Francisco, and he goes, I go, what radio station was to? And he goes, oh, every morning on the way to school, Alex Bennett. And I said, oh, and he goes, that guy was great. You know, it was like I couldn't I couldn't imagine what was going to happen. It was like this big mystery, and I, I loved it. It may be, of all but, the things I've done in radio, it was the best thing I've ever done. It, yeah. I still you get know, people And I've done me. stuff in New York, you know, and I was very famous in New York at one point. Famous more for getting fired than anything else, but I, I was famous in New York. But of all my career, that show at Live 105 was the best thing I've ever done. And you know something? I See, didn't. I, I didn't even know what I was doing at the time. I just did it. Only me. You know. I just showed up, and I just showed up. Um, I know? thought the. I thought the. Yeah, I had no idea. I thought the. Uh, 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 promotions director didn't like us. Really? Because, well, yeah, and I, and I didn't know why, and. Well, the music director I, didn't like us either because uh, I wasn't doing music. You know? Yeah, but you, I mean, weren't you were selling ads? Well, you know, I the thing with me, you know, it's kind of like people invite a Jew over to dinner and then they serve pork to see if he'll eat it, right? Uh, the job with Alex Bennett, the performer, was to see if you could get him to play any music. <laughs> And they at times would say to me, "You got to play three records an hour," you know. And I'd go, oh, "It's you know." It's yeah, I. Uh, I mean, I do you're remember talking, that entire room was on antidepressants of one kind or another. Yeah, well, the thing was that they. I said, I said one morning, I I went on the air, and I said the station's complaining I don't play enough music, so for the next hour I'm going to play nothing but music. But it's the shortest songs I can find. And we went into the <laughs> library and we got every short song. I mean, there were songs that were like a minute and ten, you know. Sure. And so we played nothing Any, but these. Anything by the Ramones would work. The, yeah, short records for the whole hour. Okay, no, no guests, nothing, just music for a solid hour. And then I said, in the last hour, we played twenty-nine records. Okay. And I said, let any other radio station beat that. And this is Alex Bennett, your more music morning show. There you go. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and after that, they never came after me. Oh, I, I remember what it was over at the, over at the Quake. They, they were trying to, you know, being real pissy. This is when a new ownership took over. And they said, we want you to play so many records an hour. And I said, uh, you know, it's in my contract. I have right. control over this, but you want music, I'll give you music. And what I did is I worked it out so that everything that went on your left channel on your radio was me. And everything on the right okay. channel was music. And the two were together. And I said, if you only want to hear me, just turn your balance knob, because they had a balance knob on radio in those right. days, sure. to the right. And if you want to hear the music, turn to the left. Left. They went. They went nuts. They said you can't do that. You know the FCC will hate us for this and blah blah blah. blah. And I said, what? I, you wanted me to play more music. I found a way of playing playing music and still doing my show. Right. We were having a good time. God, I was inventive back in the day. <laughs> yeah, we did think. We did things, many we should not have. We did, we did uh, the, the place at the, the the other radio station you mentioned, that's where the place had the little itty bitty studio audience. The, the, the Quake, yeah, it Quake? was smaller. It, it was yeah, 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 that's, that's where I fell asleep. That oh, was oh really, oh, okay. Right next to, I was right next to you, I remember, I was leaning on the desk at one point and I'm like, I, I think we lasted at the Quake for two years, if I'm not mistaken. And then the station was bought and they tried to get rid of me, but they couldn't get rid of me. Uh, and eventually they paid me not to come into work. And eventually right. uh, Live 105 came along and Ed Cramp, who was the 
the uh, general manager of Live 105, came up with this idea they do in football or in trades and whatever that we'll pay All right. we'll pay half his salary until he meets the um, um, what do you call it? the uh, the um, uh, the same ratings the same ratings he had as his last ratings with you and they were pretty good they were high you know they were up around four or five something like yeah. that and and they said no we just want uh, we want want you to pay sixty percent and we'll pay for, take forty percent and we don't want that deal of once he hits the same number that he got here that we're out, we're, we're no longer culpable so they didn't take the yeah. deal right they just took the split well it turns out the first rating that came out I got those numbers and they had to keep paying me for the rest of that period of time that my contract was still in force so I was actually getting paid by two radio stations nice yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean there I, was college I, yeah what the, there was college uh, uh, dormitories that had like shrines up to the, to the show really like they liked it well I mean we didn't know what we were doing but they liked it uh, you know I, I I never perceived that it was as popular as you're saying it was you know yeah uh, I didn't until I'd be out on the street somewhere and somebody would hear and it happens to this day I'm out on the street somewhere somebody hears me talking and goes hey were you in radio and, I, and I'll go where are you from and they go, um, the 90s, I lived in San Francisco, and boom, every time. Yeah, I mean, so. we, we were very popular, especially among a certain group, you know. And, and But I never realized how popular the show was. I mean, it, 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 it's strange when you're working it, you don't have that concept. You just go in there no, and do it. No, you're living in a vacuum. It's I a did. vacuum, and then you leave for the day, and... Uh, in one case, I remember going to Ceremony after a show, and I went to use my credit card at this uh, uh, kiosk that was in the middle. And the woman goes, hey, you guys were good this morning. And I went, what? You know, because you leave that show and you come off a heck of a cliff. Yeah. You know, yeah, everybody wants to take a nap. Yeah. And I go, oh, this morning? She goes, I listen to Alex Ben. I go, oh, thank you. You know, I appreciate it. And it was like I had no idea. Yeah, I, that was I a, you know, I, I, I never had an idea of how popular we were. You know, yeah. I, I, I just, I, was I just, into I, I, and I, people would go, yeah. You'd see them whispering, oh, there's Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after a while, it was something that I guess I took for granted. But you know, when I went in there every morning, I, I'm, I'm the laziest broadcaster in history. You know, I just went in there and I didn't know what I was going to do, and I just let the show evolve naturally. As sometimes if, there were home runs, and, and sometimes and, and when it went run. when it went in a certain direction that I knew was good, I played it to the hilt. You know, right? But I didn't go in in the morning and say, "This morning I think we'll do blah blah blah," and then we'll do this other little bit that we do. I didn't right. do any of that. You know. I went in there and I sat down in that uh, chair and I started talking. When I was through talking, it was ten o'clock. You know, or it would start with, "Hey, so what did you guys do last night?" Yeah, you yeah. know, and I would start rambling about something or where we ate or something we saw on the street or whatever it was or yeah, and it worked. Yeah, comedians added to that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and then the comics, of course. You know, yeah, and and sometimes we'd have five comics in there at a time. I don't even know how people could listen to that program. There was just so much yeah. going yeah. on, uh, and they were going to breakneck speed. And many times they were all trying to top each other. You know, and you get somebody who's a real ad lib artist like a Warren Thomas or a Stephen Pearl, and it's just Riff City. You know, and, yeah, and. And I keep going to myself. Would anybody listen to this? Well, apparently they were. You know, they yeah. kept up with the insanity of it all. And then there yeah, was we the, had, uh, the biggest morning we ever Scott. had. Had there was the morning with the, uh, uh, Jack. We uh, the other last week we lost uh, Scott Caparo's dad passed away. Oh, did he? Real oh, sick. 
Oh. Yeah, and I talk to Scott all the time. I'm really? Just a great guy. Give him, give him my best. He's still doing. Yeah. He's still doing. Yeah. He's, still, he's still doing. He's still doing. He was a regular. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, did, did, it skips occasionally. Oh, okay. Did he? So uh, just the audio. Yeah, but you're fine, and I'm I'm fine on this end. Um, um, uh, is he still in comedy? Yeah, yeah, all over the place. He does a lot of stuff in Europe. Good, good. Uh, um, does a lot of stuff in the Bay Area. He bounces back and forth. His husband is uh, Brazilian, I think. Uh, yeah, well, a lot of people yeah. used to say to me, Alex, you don't have any... Trouble is, you don't have any gay comics on. And I go, I have a lot of gay comics on. It's just they no. don't say they're gay. I said, right. you know, and it's not my job to make them say they are, you know. Scott Silverman... Caporo. Uh, the a guy who I won the San Francisco was, comedy yeah. competition was gay. And yeah. he, he didn't tell anybody he was gay. And I wasn't my job to say, hey, do something gay. You know, no. Caporo did say he was gay. He he was one, oh, of, yeah. those, one of those comedians. Caporo was, Caporo was a statue of gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That guy, wow. Good times. If you if you look up gay in I the go, dictionary, I, there's a picture of Scott Caporo. That's the old joke. There is a picture of Scott Caporo on multiple pages, strangely <laughs> enough, depending on the topic. But yeah, Scott's a winner. Yeah, yeah. At, so so you went. Yourself, same thing. You went to San Francisco. You said last week. I did. A week, I spent a week to, in San Francisco. Uh, I I've been in. I guess I don't use really use the term on myself. I've been a deadhead for many, many, many years. Yeah, many years, I decades. Know. Yeah, and so Dead and Company with John Mayer was doing the last shows. They're going to break the corporation up, and so they did this tour, and then they're going to do three nights in San Francisco. So I got got tickets. Uh, went with uh, I drug uh, Curtis D. Martini with us because mm -hmm. I need somebody to push me around. I can't walk that far. Yeah. And the seats to accommodate my nightmares. And so Curtis and I were living in the city, going to dead shows every day down at the Giants uh, Oracle Arena or Oracle mm -hmm. Stadium, whatever they're calling it. And I, they must have been a hundred hot dog vendors out front of the place mm -hmm. selling $10 hot dogs. They all look exactly like they're being human trafficked. Really? I couldn't believe it. They had to have been human trafficked. I saw the guy watching them. And we were all, I was all over the city for a week, right? Mm -hmm. I saw one homeless tent and the streets were clean as, as can be and no hookers, no drugs, no nothing. Except, of course, at the show where they had booths set up selling, you know, Everything. Yeah, but I mean, but but you know, I've been told by Bubs that that town is terrible right now. So it's, I'm surprised it's, you didn't see an encampment. Now you may not. There's have, nothing around Bubs's house that's a problem. Oh, no, he said he said he did have a homeless person sleeping in his doorway last week. You know, right? No, but, well, there was. But, but they say if you go up and down Van Ness Avenue, there are tents on Van Ness Avenue. Not anymore. No, it was empty. Really? I went up Van Ness many, many times. And last time I was there, it was Tent City. Because, you know, San Francisco is my hometown, okay? I was yeah. born and raised there. And so it holds a great deal of romance to me, you know? I, and, I love that place. And I, I feel bad I haven't been back there in a long time. And, peop and Bob says, don't come here. You're going to be very disappointed. Yeah, it was this time I was saying as I left, everybody's going, I'm sorry you're going, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested in climbing over tents. And I pulled into town and I'm driving up Van Ness and there were no tents. And I'm like, where did everybody go? And the streets are clean. Well, what did they say? Did anybody like, answer that one for you? Apparently the mayor brought in the highway patrol and moved people someplace. Yeah, but they, it, apparently the tents are somewhere else. I don't know. I was all over town. They're not in any place where you would see them where I mean, they were before. I mean, they weren't like on Market yeah, Street. Yeah. They weren't over there by um, where all the drugs were. You know, it's kind of like a balloon. You push one side of it, it's going to come out on the other side. The yeah, fact is that, that you move people 
let's say you get the highway patrol in and you move them. Well, they're going to go right. somewhere. It's just they're not there anymore. You know, so the problem is yeah, solved. Yeah, I could not find them. Yeah. I was looking. Wow. I don't know where they went, but they've gone somewhere. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are more people in Sparks. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention to you, because you mentioned David B. Edney was a guy that we knew, right? Uh, and um, huh? th that we know, or you know still. I haven't talked to him in years. I, but, I but, certainly think you know him to some degree. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, God, I'm missing. no, but you, you and I, <laughs> Miss you and I, uh, um, and Biedney did something. We started a website, and when we started a website, how many websites right. do you figure there were in the world? Probably less than a hundred. Couple of hundred. A couple of hundred. That was it. And most of those would have been government, I think. Yeah. People don't believe me when We're I say we, we, we did one We're of the it. first websites, you know, and we did. Yeah. Uh, we certainly did. Yeah. With uh, uh, Jesse um, Montrose. Montrose, yes. And it uh, was called the, uh, yeah. the, it was called the, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? The Surfing Monkey. Surfing Monkey. Surfing Monkey, which is still a great name for a, for a website. Uh, no, I still have a Surfing Monkey at home. And what He's happened was how we named it was you went down to Tijuana, and down there they sell these monkeys on a surfboard. Right, ne right next to the women who were breastfeeding. Y yes, the little old ladies who breastfeed at the border. They have monkeys for sale. Yeah, but they they are it's a monkey on a surfboard, wearing kind of a one piece bathing suit, right? Yeah. With stripes yep. on it, and when we were trying to come up with a name for our website I looked over at mine the one you brought me and I said oh, right how about the surfing monkey and I think we all agreed that was a great name you know that was the one yeah and so we had that site up for how many a couple of years you know uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and and it was uh, long, long enough that, it, that you can still uh, look up pieces of it and the art and stuff still shows up oh really oh okay I have to try yeah. that yeah yeah, but it was it was uh, you know uh, those kind of things. Uh, you turned me on to websites, you know, uh, because up until then, yeah, I mean, there really weren't many. Uh, and no, and finally, they were very narrow. And yeah, you you couldn't find to you know what people take for granted today. We were you know we were at the library looking up back then. Yeah, and that's where we had like uh, dead man talking. Uh, which was a, yep. a column by a guy on death row, and uh, I can't remember. Still alive, that. huh? Still alive. Well, still alive after all these years. Well, I mean, there's no death penalty <laughs> anymore in California, so you know. Yeah, he's but, fine. Have you talked to him lately? I haven't talked to Dean in a mm -hmm. while. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. I think I got over that. I'm not sure. Yeah, because you at one, point, at one point we should probably get into this next time we talk to you but your your relationship to serial killers was very good uh, it got out of hand got out of hand let's see which ones did you know Richard Ramirez um, the Night Stalker our guy Dean who else Dean um, uh, let's see um, Charles Ng uh, Richard Ramirez um, uh, Manson did you know uh, Manson yeah. You knew Manson? He needs some of his hair. Huh? I have some of his He sent me a bunch of his hair. Oh, boy. Um, and uh, who was the guy in New York? Um, Son of Sam? Berkowitz? Oh. Yeah. Dave and I, we were chatting away. Uh, um, I got Christmas cards from uh, Manuel Noriega one year. <laughs> <laughs> and he was uh, incarcerated. Was this while he was incarcerated? Oh yeah, no, he was incarcerated when I got him. Yeah, God. I I, uh, I saw I when I when I wrote to him, and I'm none of this typing crap. You write these letters out, dear General Noriega, and then you put four little stars after his name, so he knew that I was on his team. Oh boy, you know, oh. I could he write back, sends a Christmas card right away. Yeah, yeah all those guys, Sirhan, Sirhan. You, you, they were a big name. Um, that that lady that cut off her uh, boyfriend's 
girlfriend's head and put it in a refrigerator and then she would dress it up okay so have- all right i think we're running out of time yeah, nothing <laughs> <out>. <laughs> We can talk about all of them. This is why I mean, Chuck, this is why Chuck's one of the most interesting human beings on the planet without a front yeah, tooth. Probably. You know. Mm, there are yeah, other more, the there are more interesting people on the planet with a full set of front teeth, but not with a full set of teeth. Yeah. 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 I would hope so. Anyway, it's great talking to you again. I don't think I'm going to get a replace. I think it's the new me. Yeah. I've missed this. I gl- I'm glad we are talking again. I it makes me so happy. Yeah. You have no idea. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a guy who will appear here again. His name is Chuck Farnham. Stay where you are, Chuck, so I can talk to you after this is all over. And uh, we say goodbye. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Chuck Farnham, folks. Chuck Farnham, uh, if you uh, were a fan of my uh, radio show in San Francisco... You know who that guy is, okay? Alrighty. So let me let me just let me just get my mic up here. Uh, I got to do a few things here to get things in uh, done. And you know nobody's calling the program right now. Nobody. Zero. Zilch. Oh boy. Well, you know. Uh, uh. Hmm. Well. In that case, uh, I guess I'll just call it quits. Um, Yeah. Why not? Every good reason to call it quits. If nobody's calling, then there's no reason to do a show. So, uh, let me see here. I guess I'll just... uh, Oh, well, here comes somebody. Here comes... God damn it. Brian. Jeez almighty, Brian. Uh, Brian Neary calls and and then prevents me from having to call this thing short you know anyway how are you brian wow i feel so special tonight why well, yeah you're you're it you're the, you're all i got hey, I, I do have a good scott caporo story scott he must have been on one of your shows i think it was a night thing though but he i saw him at a i saw him perform and uh I can I can still picture it, but but uh, he he would take that microphone with the foam, you know, the foam microphone. Yeah. And he would he would stick his mouth over the whole thing. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> it was so funny. He would just he would say some kind of set up to joke you know, about being gay or something, and then he'd say, "Yeah, but can you do this?" And he he took that microphone and yeah. like put the yeah. whole thing over it. Yeah. Well, Caparo, uh, <laughs> let me see here. I I I haven't seen him or heard from him in years, you know. But uh, there was a time there where people were saying to me, uh, "You know, you don't have any gay comics on your show," and. Um, and I made every attempt to find gay comics. But I did have gay comics on my show, but they didn't want to come out of the closet. So they didn't want to, you know, be known as, um, you know, as as, uh, as gay. So I, we just never did it. Like Jim Samuels, who won the San Francisco Comedy Competition, did my show on many an occasion, was gay, you know. So Scott was, I think, just about the first one that came out and was gay and just said, I'm gay. You know, I'm a gay yeah. comic. Now, I don't know how a gay comic different, differs from anybody else because the only object is in comedy is to make people laugh. And if they're not laughing, you're not a comic. I don't care if you're gay or otherwise. Yeah, exactly. No, he, he, was, he was really good. But he was good. He was good. And I'll tell you another one who I thought was really terrific was Sabrina Matthews. Uh, Ah, And I don't know where she is now, but boy, she, I thought she was a real talent. You know, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't doing these people any, any favors. Like for instance, Jim Samuels, I didn't have on that often because he, he was a, he was a funny comic on stage, but when it came to doing the radio program, he wasn't very good at it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there is a difference there. There were people who worked well on the show uh, but uh, didn't work well on stage, and there were people who worked well on stage but didn't work well on the show. 
So I didn't have him on that often. Uh, but I wasn't about ready to suddenly put him on because he was gay. Right, yeah, you just know. to hit the quota. I think that's... Exactly. That's an issue with... I, I don't want to say too much, but there there's an issue with a lot of the, the diversity and inclusion uh, projects at companies mm -hmm. that I've seen that require, you know, certain in, amount of interviews and all this stuff just to make sure that they're saying that stuff. But then sometimes well, they already know who they're going to hire. You know, just I, to I, I think quota. nothing could be more homophobic than interviewing somebody for a job because he mm -hmm. is gay. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, don't do the gays any favors by doing that, you yeah. know? Well, it's usually not gay, but it's usually other ethnic groups or something. But yeah, the other thing you mentioned was, was uh, some, I've heard some of some recordings of the show back, you know, and yeah, there are times that, that there's so many guys, so many people on there and they're like riffing and then they're, when they're coming back from commercials, uh, when you're coming back from commercials, you know, guys would be on a riff and that all the comics would be laughing within themselves sometimes and then for us as listeners like we're trying to get what was going on because it, it sounded so funny and then you could hear people just laughing but some of the some of the recordings i've heard man yeah i, I don't know how everybody was able to talk over each other especially when you had people well they, like they just they just did yeah <laughs> you know uh i the, the that was a problem i ran into sometimes um but you know something? I, I found that that really wasn't a drawback if there was just too many people talking at the same time and it was noisy. Uh, I think that helped get me an audience. And I'll tell you why. Oh, yeah. Somebody's, in those days, you go down the dial, right? You'd be turning the dial. You would you know, Push buttons came in, it ruined radio because you put something on your push button and then a news station comes along and you would never find it because you didn't do that whole thing of tuning it down the dial right. but in the old days when they tuned up and down the dial i found the more noise that was going on the higher the ratings because mm -hmm. people would be driving going by and all of a sudden they'd go by your station and they hear and they'd stop to hear what the hell this was you know so that was uh, that was that yeah yeah but uh yeah yeah i just i often found that this whole thing of of making a big deal about quotas and all of that. I mean, I don't, I, I just think there's something racist and homophobic about that. Because if you've got to tell somebody that you've got to hire a certain amount of people because you've got to have blacks or, or gays, uh, that's not doing anybody any favors, you know? Yeah, and, and I think if you're a smart manager, you when you interview somebody and they have a different background not saying gay but like like ethnic background they grew up differently they went to school differently maybe in out of the country sometimes you want that you want that mix in your group to get different opinions or different views of things going on especially with problems and stuff like well, that yeah so if you're smart you hire that so you have that mixed group and that's going to give you an advantage but nothing that they should say well you should interview at least three people like this and then, you know, two people like this. That's why I, I don't really agree with that. Well, you see, I felt there was a time when we uh, we we did this uh, uh, and it was it was warranted um, simply because there were certain people who didn't have the opportunity to mm -hmm. get the experience to be a good person to interview just simply mm -hmm. because they didn't get that. You know what I'm right. saying? So that you, in order to start evening that out, you had to go out of your way to hire some so they would get the experience and they would be, you know, have the, have the history. But I think to hire them just because yeah. is not right. You're not doing them any favors. If you're hiring somebody because they're black or they're gay or they're man, whatever, and they can't do the job, you're not doing them any favors. Exactly, or your company. Yeah, right? or, yep. or your company, but forget the company. Think about those people. I, I don't know, if I were gay or black or whatever, I wouldn't want to feel that I was hired simply because I was black or gay. And if I was black and gay, boy, what a, what a you know, that's the tri oh. that's the di dry, and trifecta. And a woman. Well, and a woman, that'd be the and trifecta. That'd be the trifecta. 
hey, we don't have to hire any more people more this year. We we got them all in one person. You know. Yeah, but I, you know, I like, I like. There's actually there's somebody I was just talking to you today. I went to lunch with, and we we're talking about some guy, and he said he was saying something that he was gay, and I was really surprised. But um, I, I listen on the on the satellite. I hear a lot of comedy stuff, and Paul Mooney always pops up. I, mm -hmm. I never knew he was gay, but I just thought because of how his comedy was, it didn't touch on that part at all. It was so much about you know civil rights and all that type of stuff, you know, and you know that 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 type of rant. Um, that I just love his comedy. Yeah, and, you know, he, and so in like, spite of the that, fact that his merit is how good of a comic he was. Well, well the fact it wasn't, yeah, the, it wasn't. Well, the fact that he was gay uh, didn't enter into his act. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> it, it was more about the fact that he was black. I think he had to pick which one he you know he, he felt most abused by. Yeah, um, oh, I yeah. love Mooney. I love Mooney. You know, Mooney was Mooney did a real solid for me. Mm. There were these two creeps called Opie and Anthony, mm. uh, who uh, their only claim to fame is they sent some guy into St. Patrick's Cathedral to have sex in the pews, right? Mm. You know, they made, uh, they got all, into all kinds of trouble, and I think they got fired or something. And eventually they wound up over at Sirius. And uh, for some reason, uh, I think it was Anthony more than Opie uh, that uh, didn't like me, mm. you know, because I kidded about them once, you know, and I, mm. you know, that's what I do and that's what they do and so on. They they could dish it out, they just couldn't take it, all right? So now Mooney is doing a show with them and somehow, I don't know, my name came up or something and they started dissing me and doing a whole bit about me and how uh, Alex Bennett is a old creep blah, blah 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 and Mooney said stop it and they said what do you mean he says Alex Bennett is doing what he you know you owe your life to Alex Bennett you wouldn't be sitting in those chairs right now if it wasn't for Alex Bennett if he hadn't led the way years ago and you should be ashamed of yourself for doing this and don't say that about Alex. And I think he got up and walked out. Wow. And they came over to do my show and told me what had gone on. And I just appreciated that no end. Because, you know, when you're a guest on somebody else's show, you don't want to, you know, you're there to plug stuff and everything, and you, you don't want to, uh, you know, make a big deal out of it. And so, but, damn it, he, he wouldn't take that from them. He wouldn't let them get away with it. And I always appreciated that. You know, that was that was a really really decent thing they did. So anyway, but uh, um, yeah, Paul Mooney was. It, it, I in fact, when you just mentioned Paul Mooney gay, I had forgotten that he was. Your mic's on, not on, uh, Brian. Your mic is not on. Yeah, I kept coughing. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I I had almost forgotten that Mooney was gay. Yeah. Because yeah. As I remember him more as a racial comic, you know, a guy who would come on and tell some pretty heavy stuff. Yeah. You know, he was, I think, maybe one of Richard Pryor's best friends. Mm -hmm. He wrote for Pryor. He was on Pryor's TV show. Wrote was on Pryor's writing staff on Pryor's TV show. Mm -hmm. And he was very close to him, very close to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you ever see the series, uh, the, the variety series, that uh, the weekly series that Pryor did? No. You know why? Because right. it didn't last very long. <laughs> he got in nothing but one problem after another with the networks. You know, mm -hmm. the network was getting all pissy with him. Um, um, the, f the first episode they did, they did, it opened up with him totally naked, <coughs> but with no penis. Like Ken? A and he says, this is what they do to black men when they get a TV show or something like that. That was the, <laughs> that was the thing. And uh, it was uh, pretty good, pretty good, yeah. you know. But well, the, I, the network didn't like it. And uh, Robin Williams was on that show as a regular. He was one of the cast members. Oh, really? And yeah. uh, 
it was I think a very special show because it it didn't didn't fall into any category he did one show in which he did about a 45 minute sketch on the Cotton Club and it was just nothing but a drama you know on this supposed comedy show and I went that's brilliant that he would take that chance you know uh, but it, it didn't do very well, you know, because it was it was too black, it was too everything, you know, it was too critical of society, and on and on we go. Mm-hmm. But you know, anyway. So I'm looking. I'm, I'm running around tonight looking for my lease, my signed lease from two years ago, because I think we should probably have it. I ha- I have copies of it, but they're PDFs and they're not signed, okay. So I was looking for it. And I can't find him anywhere in the house, and I'm beginning to think the only person that has a signed copy of it is my lawyer. I'm beginning yeah. to think he's the one that kept the copy <clears throat> of it signed. Yeah, probably. Uh, it probably because <clears throat> I know that it, I found a, le- uh, a email where he said I'm I'm sending you the uh, the lease, sign them, and then. Ins- send them back to me and then I will get them out to the landlords and whatever. He probably kept it when he got his, when he got the copy back. That's mm-hmm. what I'm thinking. Yeah, that actually that happened to me. Uh, actually Tiffany had some uh, papers that she had and we had to go back to the lawyer after we cursed him out because he was charging us for like, you know, stupid really really stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. And I cursed him out and said I never want to see his face again. I had to crawl back to him to get a signed copy of something for her. <laughs> so that was because he of, because he was keeping the signed copy of he, some kind he, of agreement. He, Exactly That's, what you said. Yeah, there was, there was one signed thing that he received, and he let us know that he received it. And then I said, why were all these other charges on here? And I blasted him a little bit. And then I had to go back to his office to go get uh, the copy of the signed one because I realized that we didn't have a copy of it. That we didn't I, have I, I'm, I'm beginning to think that's what happened with us. I, I'm yeah, I did that think. once, and so ever since then, I got I scan everything I signed. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. scanned it. <clears throat> I scanned it. Uh, when I got it, or he he sent me a copy of it, PDF of it, yeah, uh, that I saw, and then I think that's what I signed. Okay, but I never made a copy of the signed version. Of yeah, that. I always sign it and then scan it. Yeah, right away. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I, I name it I something that happened, I know where I'm going to find it. I think what it is is I has signed it uh, and sent it back to him. Then he sent it on to them, and then they sent him a copy back. And he probably put it in his files. Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm believing. But anyway, yeah. so we're, we're going getting all kinds of I had to get six months worth of uh, checks that were ca- oh, ca- ca- canceled and sent back, you know, cash and sent back, all those kind of things so we can tr- go ahead and get these guys. It's ridiculous. It's just, I, it, it's so preoccupying my mind, you know. And you like to feel, I like to feel for once in, in the last couple of years that I'm settled in this place, you know? They can put my right. feet up on the table and say, can't get me out of here. And well, you thought you were, right? And look, what? You thought you were, right? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what it is is they, it, what happens is every two years, they have to send you a, a lease renewal. And it's a mm-hmm. lease renewal form, and it's called a lease renewal. And it's supposed to be based on the lease you already have. In other words, that's the lease. This is the re- le- lease renewal. Well, the lease that I have says $500.07 $500. a month. The one they, the re- lease renewal they sent me said it's like, you know, twenty two twenty five. They're trying to screw with it. Well, they're trying to screw with it, exactly. But now I have 60 days to get it back to them. Otherwise, they can move to throw me out of here. Mm. But Give it to them on the 59th day. N- no, I'm not going to give them anything because <laughs> I can argue they never sent me a lease renewal. They sent me a piece of paper that said lease renewal, but they didn't send me a lease renewal because if you're going to renew my lease, it's for the amount of money on the lease. And that's, you know, so I, I just knew they would do some, try something. 
Are they trying to slip it by you, or they're trying they to? May have felt they could slip it by me, you know. But they're really? claiming they're claiming we're still in court, you know. We're still uh, fighting this thing. Well, the fact is that, uh, and even my business manager found an article today on it. New York State, um, uh, when you, let's say you do a case and you you lose it, now you want to go appeal it. So you go to the appellate court, and the appellate court looks at it and says uh, either we'll rule on this or we're sending it back to your original judge, all right? And if it's by unanimous consent, that's it. Well, they're taking it to the Court of Appeals as opposed to the appellate court to try and get them to, you know. But they can't, the appellate court won't take it because by unanimous consent, uh, the Court of Appeals won't take it because by unanimous consent, the appellate court sent it back to my judge and said that's okay we we you know nothing improper here so that should be it but th they, the, but this guy over at the landlords is saying well we're still appealing it well you're just making some kind of motions it's something it's really a waste of your time because they passed a thing in california in new york re a while back that says that the the appellate court's verdict is the final verdict. Can they raise your rent after every two years? Yeah, they can do that. In my case, is it'd be there like, a limit and percentage that they can do it yeah, in New York? Yeah, uh, if I take a two-year, uh, two-year, um, what do you call it, uh, lease, uh, they can raise it like, I think it's 5% Okay. Uh, but every a month. Instead of that, they're looking for 300%. No, no they're not looking for 300%. No. Well, 500 and something, 2,200. No, 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 no. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get what would have been the lease rate if the judge hadn't said, we're rolling this back to what it was in 2003. Right. So, um, so you know, I mean, but having to go through that, it's just, you know, it's just, I, I have a hard time going to sleep at night because I'm thinking about this thing. Yeah. And it just doesn't make me very happy, you know. Um, so, but I mean, so, but it, 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 what they're probably figuring is, I don't know if they thought I'd be stupid enough to say, oh, well, I'll sign this, uh, oh, whoops, <laughs> you know, no. Just, you should be able to go to sleep at night knowing that Tony has a place for you if you need to ever rent somewhere. Right, I know that, yeah. But if you, it's a lousy landlord. But the, the thing, landlord. but the thing is, the thing landlord. is that that they technically have not sent me a lease renewal. It's not a renewal for my lease. It may have my name on it, but it's not a renewal on my lease at all. All you got to do is keep Tony happy with coffee. He'll let you stay there. Okay. All right. Good. Remind me, me to laugh at him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, funny. You know, but I'm, I have to. I have to say one 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 quick thing is uh don geller gotta thank don geller because you know peewee passed away and you go on youtube and the first thing that popped up was don geller's thing that he did like two years ago i think it was of all segments of peewee herman on letterman yeah, from yeah. the first one yeah uh, so i mean it, it was pretty cool to see the the you see <clears throat> you see him you know, Paul Rubens as Pee Wee, the first time that he was pretty quiet, he wasn't really doing the act that much. You know, he was still doing it, but not that much. You see the progression that the Letterman show, and then you see him the last one where he's just going crazy as Pee Wee and, and doing spaz stuff. And it's it's hysterical. But Don really sets that thing in perspective. Yeah, Don, if you look at it, all those like Don did that probably three years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. he can't do any new one. The Letterman people did a nice one. I saw it on Dave's actual. Yeah, but the, I'll tell you, the Letterman stuff isn't as good as the ones that Don does. The one I saw with Letterman put up, I actually thought it was really good. Yeah, no, but you should see the one. ones that that Geller did. I mean, uh -huh. he does a whole history of Pee Wee Herman on the David Letterman show, not just one or two appearances. Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta. I don't really know. I don't really follow them, so I really, really yeah. wouldn't know. So yeah, but they they uh, initially, I think they. I don't know what the story is. Geller would have to tell you, and I don't know if he wants to talk about it. But you know, I mean, it, for years he was the go-to guy for Letterman clips on YouTube. 
And then all of a sudden, one day, Letterman decided he wanted to make a buck off YouTube and told Don not to do it. But he did. they did tell him, uh, they did hire him for a while to work for them uh, getting stuff together. But then somehow there was a falling apart. I, I don't know what it was. You, he'd have to tell you, and he probably doesn't want to talk about it, you know. But he's on to other things, you know, so. He's just, I like Don. I think the world of Don. Don makes me laugh, really laugh. And he doesn't know why, <laughs> you know. But, uh, and he's appeared, he's come on here some nights. In fact, he's probably listening right now and is too shy to call. But, uh, Don, if you call, I won't ask you about what happened with Letterman, okay? So, don't feel... Not that you don't want to call. Okay. Anyway, what else? What else? Uh, oh yeah, Trump today went down, made his monthly court appearance. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think they're they're saying that that his calendar is so crazy right now that they're having a hard time trying to fit in all these trials. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, there isn't a matter that you have to fit in the trials to accommodate him. You know, he go, the, the Republicans have been going around yelling and screaming, oh, they're being unfair to him. He's being treated differently than anybody else would. Yes, he is. If, if it were anybody else, they would have had to pay a huge bail today, and they would have had their picture taken, you know. Oh, come and on. And they might have been incarcerated. It, it might have been incarcerated, yeah. So uh, come on, don't uh, don't tell me that he isn't being treated like uh, is isn't he's being given more of a leeway than anybody. When you say that they're, they're going to have to try and fit the trials around the election, come on, that shouldn't even be a consideration. Yes, Ray, I heard that uh, it was his choice to show up in person. Like he could have yeah. done it via Zoom or something, but he wanted to get the sympathy of his exactly. uh, yeah. his base. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, Tony. Can I count, is that, what, Ray, is that, what is that doll? On the no, that's from the birds. Oh. That's, that's him from, being No, I mean behind you, that's, behind that's you. That's your mom, that's your mom. Oh, oh. You, know, you, you know what you and my mom have in common? She's dead and so is your acting career. Yeah, it's true. No, that's a true story, yeah. That's I what know. that's what turned around at the in the chair in the end of cycle. Actually, that's what killed her. She must have heard his monologue. Probably. Her last words. I wouldn't oh blame her. I heard his monologue. He's not a comedian. Well, he's not an actor either, I guess. Why are you being so mean to Ray? Oh, why does he have my mother up for two years? That's Isn't not that his, because his, you his, told me you liked it before. I'll take it I off. I said that I liked the wallpaper and didn't say my mother. Yes, you did say you liked it. No, yes, I didn't. you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> and that's uh, that's I, not. Wait, your, how can I'm Tony? Mad. Why are you being so fucking I'm weird? Not, like I'm not mad. I'm just giving no, you. No, hey, you're like out of your mind. Like the other day no, when you were like no, talking with me. I'm just picking on you, like you like to pick on me. What? It's a joke. Whatever, Tony. I don't give yeah, a shit. Whatever. Well, anyway, hey, hey, guys. Dude, whatever, let, man. Let, I don't let's care. let's bring Dude, love what? love back to this program. Dude, okay? I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, I have I'm no fucking talking. idea. Actually, <laughs> that is the mother who turned around in the chair in oh, Psycho. Yeah, yeah. In Psycho. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Joke, but you take a person. What then? Was supposed to be your mother? Well, I mean. Never mind. Never mind. I mean, I mean, whatever. T Jesus Christ! What the? F <laughs> Man. Okay. So bizarre. A yeah, lot, lot, lot of love, hugs yeah. and kisses. Hugs and kisses. There you go. <laughs> She's gone. Okay. Right. You can leave it. I don't care. You uh, just said you did care. You said, why well, is it up there for two years? Well, I don't know what's more hideous, her or the wallpaper. Well, yeah, the wallpaper. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. We all have that wallpaper here. Uh, yeah. Uh, I do, but it's a bad thing. Yep. I'd rather have you look at all the junk in my office. I know. Phil, we're trying to do Phil sent okay. it to all of us. It was cute for a while. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. we're doing spring cleaning, and the kids are cleaning out their closets. 
And Tiffany wanted this bed just in case somebody stays over. She wanted this bed in this office so bad. So we finally get it, and now there's just clothes and shit. Yeah, all yeah. what 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 happened? What's happened there? It kind of looks like it kind of looks I like my DJ set up and everything, and nice little office. And then they go, I want a bed in there. I want a bed in there in case somebody wants to stay the night. And nobody stayed the night at this house. You're gonna, you're going to get gray hair worrying about all this, Brian. I got well, it. Well, right. it kind of yeah. looks like you're on hoarders. Yeah. You know, with all yeah. that, uh, with all that stuff. Got a lot of clothes on the bed. Anyway, hey, getting back to uh, the whole uh, Trump deal, uh, you know, it's just amazing to me um, that uh, the insanity of this whole thing. I mean, to begin with, it's you know, uh, Trump said today, "This is really a sad day in America," and it is. Thank you very much, Donald, for doing what you did and making it this a sad day for America. You know, it, it, none of this would happen without your cooperation, okay? I think, I think what he meant was it's a sad day because he's involved in it. Well, I know that's what he meant, but yeah. the fact is, this is a very sad day. It's a sad day of any human, human being with the American public and trust with the job of being president of the United States would do what he is accused of doing. Absolutely. And and it's terrible. It's just terrible that that it had to come to this, but not only once, not only twice, but three times. It's looking bad. And and I'll tell you, we forget there was even one more case. There was the E. Jean Carroll thing in New York, which he lost. Yeah. You know. Uh and and he's being sued again by E. Jean Carroll because he then went on on the on his social media posts and so on and started putting her down again and calling her that creepy woman or whatever yep. i mean he's never gonna learn he thinks he can do everything anything he wants to do with him i wish they would have taken him into custody huh well, that's any, any any of us had done what he did if any, any of us had done charges, whatever he did any one of his charges we would be in custody until the trial i think they wouldn't they have uh, i don't know the process but wouldn't they have handcuffed us and taken us off to a jail cell until, well, they, they, they until, actually arrested him in court they, they and and they did it the last time too they they said you've been arrested and then the judge released him on his own recognizant. I don't no, think no, 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 but what I'm saying is, don't they usually, let's say you got to pay bail, okay? Don't they then haul you off to a jail cell until the bail comes through? Nah. I think so. Take, I think so. Take a check. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, I it, come on, he's kid. being treated with kid gloves in comparison to what, how you or I would be treated in this situation. Absolutely. And, and, and I think, think it's wrong. Next time he opens his mouth about Hunter Biden getting uh, preferential treatment, you need to look in the mirror, Donald. Well, let, let's let's okay. Let's let's just say for a moment Hunter Biden got preferential treatment. Okay. So is Donald Trump. Yeah, he he's going to go to jail, I think, actually. And and let's be honest about this: the difference between what Donald Trump is accused of doing and what Hunter Biden is accused of doing are a, way different from each Absolutely. other. One happens to be a crime of sedition, okay? Yep. And Hunter Biden's crime was he didn't pay his taxes. Millions of Americans don't pay their taxes. Yeah, and they get away with it better than Hunter Biden. Right. And he exercised his second amendment right. Who? Which you Hunter Biden, he bought a gun oh. when he, when he when he was a drug addict. Oh yeah, they, yeah well, they they busted him on that too, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. but they, they were gonna waive that in the plea deal. Well, you you if you're a drug addict, you're not supposed to go out and buy a gun. Not right? in that state. Yeah, okay, yeah. I mean no, but you're not supposed to buy a gun. However, right. if you are a drug addict, how do you know you are a drug addict? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a kind of a silly law. Yeah, it is. You know. Uh, in fact, I would. If it, it depends what drug you, you're on, if you're if it's heroin, uh, uh, I I think uh, if you had a gun, you'd be too tired to pull the trigger. You know, you'd be too loopy to, to be able to aim it at anything. You'd, you'd you know? be nodding out in the corner. Yeah, you'd exactly. fall asleep. Uh, yeah. But but are they are they gonna are they gonna let cameras in? No, I hope so. No, it's a federal case. They don't. Uh, uh, no. Federal, federal, yeah, federal cases, they don't allow cameras in. 
Now, on the other hand, when the Georgia happens, which I think is next on the that's next month. Yeah, Georgia's next. That's oh what yeah, that's going to go month, after yeah. this month. Uh, this month, uh, when when Georgia comes through, uh, that is a state charge, and in that case, I think maybe they do allow, you know, cameras. And she and, she has said they're going to. He's going to have to post bail in Georgia. Oh really? Mm. Oh really? Yeah, but how much? How much? What's the maximum for whatever his charges are? I don't know. Twenty five, fifty thousand dollars. Well, trying to bribe a public official, or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. Hundred thousand. I don't know. George is kind of. I, I heard back. they were going to charge him with racketeering. <clears throat> really? Yeah. 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 Trying to bribe that guy, pretty much. Get him on the RICO Act. It's huh? sort of his racketeering, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he's. I think you may actually see him actually go to jail. I think you're going to get your wish. Well, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't, care I, don't if he I don't know if that's the case, and I'll tell you why. Uh, John Redshaw, who? Well, John Redshaw. Oh, he's. I think he's legitimate. He posts on your page. Alex, I know. Right? I know he does. Let me see, but let me Red make sure. Let me make sure problem. here. Let me put my yeah. camera on here, and there's it's John Redshaw. Oh, we're not, we're and gonna John, are you, wait, hold on a second. John, are you there? John, are you there? Okay. Oh, I like the thing you put up, Red. Yeah. John, if you're gonna come on, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 not the hell, man. I only wonder what I said. Okay, get back to our normal Zoom people. Yeah, the bad thing is I had my speaker. The bad thing is I had my speaker up really loud. You know, luckily nobody's in the hallway over here. Well, what was that? Was that that guy making those sounds? Was there porn going on? Uh, there was something. Yes. Going on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Once again, it's it's gay porn. Yeah. You know, what I said before you let him on, I said make sure it's straight porn. Yeah. I mean, if it were straight porn, I think we probably would have sat here and watched it for a while. Absolutely. Why not? Yeah. So they go. They're going off of the off the YouTube and me, grabbing names. Let me see here. Uh, is he? Is I, after after oh. Tony giving me shit, and after that, I'm gonna have to call my shrink. <laughs> I can oh, I can oh, see him here. in the chat Redshaw, room. Redshaw Redshaw is he's saying he's no. It's he's it's he's not me. No, yeah, he's it's trying to warn really you. Like no, gone. holy crap is the last thing Red Shaw put up. Can I ask you a question, though? Yeah. Would that be considered gay porn if he's by himself, though? I don't think so. Well, no, but it would appeal. Would it not appeal to a gay person? I don't know, so don't tell me what was going on. Oh, well, it was this guy with this candle, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was lit. And, and he kept dripping it on his nipples. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's not bad. I've seen <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. It was just a guy doing? take. He was just a guy taking a nap in his car. <laughs> that's exactly. right. And he strained his back, and he's going, "Oh, oh." oh. <laughs> French, French <laughs> is funny. He's like, "No, it's not me. No, no, it's not me. No, holy crap!" <laughs> that's good. I got this. Oh, I got oh, this oh, pretty well solved, oh, though. Man. Whenever I see a suspicious person yeah. coming on, I immediately go to my video, video of me. And so that yeah. never gets on. We just got the audio. I uh, know. Oh, oh the that was no big too. deal. What? We got the video too, and I was wondering why it was oh, taking you, so long oh, to kill the oh, video. Oh, you got the video. Yeah, we oh, got yeah. the video. See, what yeah. I did is when we I went to it, when I went I to it for the eye. air, I I put my my camera on. I thought it was going to disappear, so I didn't look away, and it never disappeared. Same. <laughs> <laughs> well, it took uh, me a while to get number thirty-five, Ray. If you look it up again, okay. so if they say if you ever seen gay porn, you can't say no because every one of the panels think gay porn. <laughs> Jesus, uh, <laughs> I don't know why they do gay porn. Why can't they do straight porn? How about something different? We might watch it for a few minutes. It's not shocking okay. enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, oh, but that was that was that was solo or mono. I don't know. I, I, I it would attract. Let's talk about Trump. Yeah, let, let's go back oh, to Trump. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Now here, yeah. here is Don Giller. Let's make sure this is Don Giller. I think oh, it prob geez. probably is. I would imagine. Yeah. Let me see here. Is this Don Giller or is this? Uh, 
Hello. There it is. Oh, it is oh, Don no, Giller. Yes, it, it is Don Giller. He has his clothes on. Yeah. Don, we wanted to make no! sure. We wanted to make sure it was really you. Yeah. Now here, here is Don Giller. Let's make sure this is oh, Don. You have to turn us off, Don. Turn arf, arf. No, turn our turn the audio off. Turn your radio down. Can, Hello, there it is. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. See, see, your, 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 your browser. <laughs> We're is, hearing both your, of you. Uh, your, both. your browser is on. We wanted to make sure. We wanted to make sure it was really you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. I'm John Giller. Let's make kill sure. the browser. Kill the browser. Close your browser, Don. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> or turn down yeah. your volume. You mean the one? What am I okay. doing? Part here? of the problem with trying to tell somebody to turn down their browser. We're is, hearing both it's of you. because you're they you're don't right. know that that's what they're hearing. You know? <laughs> How could you not know that that's what you're you hearing? No, 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 but that happens. No, that can happen oh, sometimes. Okay. I think he's good now. Yeah, I think you're good now, Don. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's so okay. Did, you want my, did you want my praise in person? I wanted to thank you. It was very kind. No, it like it, 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 it was really cool to see Pee Wee at the very beginning, where he was really, really sort of, you know, not not as you know big as he was even before his movie, and then he was talking about his movie the next time, and then the next time you see him going really, really crazy. So it, it was cool to see the progression. Well, you know what happens, I think, it when you see something like that, is that when he first appeared on, he probably did have a TV show or the movie. Yeah, he just barely had the TV show on, but no movie. He was talking about, like, oh, I want to And so you're not going on with the confidence of everybody knows what I'm doing, mm -hmm. okay? By the time the movie came out or the TV show was a big hit and he came on, then he says to himself, well, I got to give them what they want, you know, what they expect. Uh, and so that's why people are more uh, uh, sure of themselves the second or third time uh, on that show. Wouldn't you agree yeah. with that, Don? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Um, Don Gelman, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, Dan, Dan Gelmer. Yeah, Danny. Um, <laughs> which, which, there are two versions I put up. Uh, the one, uh, the second version uh, has a suffix that says recut. Um, the first version, I put up the first version, uh, and then the copyright owners of Fever, the, uh, uh, no, I can't remember her name, um, the, the big hit, Fever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Peggy yeah. Lee. Peggy Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they blocked it. Really? So I put up the second version, this this recut version, uh, without that. And then, at some point, that block on the original version was rescinded. So so oh, okay. both versions are now up. Uh, but that, was a prob that was probably a problem because you had music, you right? I, I just YouTube. looked and it's not it's not on your channel. Neither neither one of them. It's on YouTube. I, just I, I googled the uh, Pee Wee Herman interviews and it's I, 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 under Don Giller account. Oh, well, I didn't, um, I just uh, put that, uh, search uh, Pee Wee Herman Letterman. Oh, okay. Let's just see if I, that works. I just I just googled it. It looked like it was on YouTube. How do you? Yeah, uh, let, me, let me ask you oh, this, Don, uh, because uh, someone who posts on YouTube, oh, obviously, I need uh, no, I need a little advice. How do you, all of a sudden, let's say Pee Wee Herman dies, all right? All of a sudden, Don Geller's Pee Wee Herman video of him on Letterman oh, I suddenly shows up. Well, uh, no, it, it, I put, how, do you, I put, how do you do that and make it suddenly come to the front? I, I put it up in 2019. It's yeah, three yeah, years but ago. but yeah. I mean, is it is it YouTube that says, oh well, we better start featuring this one or what? I, 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 it's completely out of my control. I have no idea. Really? Because that's strange. Because yeah. a lot of times, when somebody dies, all of a sudden there's Don Giller's. Uh, uh, I, I th maybe there's like an algorithm. It, yeah, it might be algorithms and people news. searching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that could be. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to point uh, uh, tell Alex uh, a couple things. Yeah. One. Um, uh, I'm still hired. They, they, there's been no bad blood. There's, there's. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. I'm still there. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not doing anything, but, um, but they still. Uh, uh, I'm a consultant. They have me on retainer. That's essentially. I right. see. Okay. In yeah. other words, that means we don't have to give you any health insurance. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing, um, 
uh, last night when you when you're talking about uh, perfect pitch and I emailed you and you you were he back. sent me an essay <laughs> well, no. an essay about what perfect pitch is and so I now rescind my statement about that I have perfect pitch yeah but but, but I, I can but, sing in, in in tune yeah I I don't know if you have perfect pitch or not and I hope I I didn't want to convey that claim. Uh, only that the criteria the, the criteria that you used what uh, didn't apply that that's all oh okay so i want to but say. i mean you, if somebody you, if somebody takes a key on the piano and plays a note i can just sing it back to you you know the but, perfect pitch would say okay i want you to sing a d sharp well, exactly. well that 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 is what he said and so i i take it back i don't have perfect pitch Where's the where's the mic here? Hardly anybody okay. has perfect pitch. Yeah, can, it's very rare. You can't hear it, but pretend that you can. Um, what's what's the pitch? Uh, C sharp. <laughs> Close. <laughs> no, this this the, the, these are always uh, in A. In A. Are they? A? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Four forty. A four forty. Yeah. Right. So. Right. This this is a way, a way of cheating. Why didn't I know that? My father used to have you know tuning fork at home. Tuning several fork. tuning forks. Wow. And how he would tune his violin is he would hit the thing, and then he would place the end of the uh, of the tuning fork on the on the violin itself, and then he yeah, would, and it resonates. Yeah, yeah. And he would use that to tune the violin. So he had quite wow. a few of these around the house: one upstairs, one downstairs. You know, wherever he would so wherever he would pick up a violin, there would be a tuning fork there. So I grew up with tuning forks. Okay. <laughs> Is that, is you that, can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. I know that. I'm gonna hurt you. Yeah, ba, 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 da, da. <laughs> yeah <I> joke. <laughs> but you know, he wrote me this essay last night. I mean, literally, and I, I, I'm so appreciative of it. I had to write him back and thank him for it. You blocked me, huh? You blocked me. No, I didn't block you. <laughs> But all you have to do is say you can sing. If someone tells you to sing a note, you can sing that note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, no, but it, no, but it is that. It, for instance, uh, well, that's uh, what Alex can do. You, you, if you sing a note, he'll be able to sing. No, but no. If you say I want you to sing an E flat, and yeah. you sing an E flat, and then you press the E flat on the piano, and it's exactly the same. Yeah, no, yeah, that's you're right. That, 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 that's perfect. Pitch. That's perfect right. pitch. But I don't. I may have perfect pitch, but I'll I'll never know because I it. because I was too lazy to listen to every note and figure out you know listen to what they were. Okay, I'm gonna hit this. Oh. Tell me what it is. Can't hear it. It's A something. A. Uh, there you I, go. Uh, wait a minute. I, you I, have perfect no, pitch. No, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. You hit you hit the thing, and then you put it on your microphone. Where's where is the mic? Is 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 the mic in your uh, in your monitor? I don't know. See if you can't hear that. Yeah. I I don't know where the mic is on on this laptop. Yeah, I'm getting a new mic by the way. Yeah, yeah. and, and I'll stop this. It's silliness. Yeah. What, what mic are you gonna get? No, oh, it's just a Elgato, but I'm getting oh. a, a thing, a new stand too that I'll click in on my table here. And then it will uh -huh. just come out here, and I can move it out of the way when I'm not using it, you know. So now Phil's going to have to buy one. <laughs> yeah, bigger. Uh, well, bigger no, Phil better. has his Phil has his like five hundred dollar microphone, which nobody needs, you know. Nope. Not for Don't need it. no, not for talking. No you, way. In fact, you need something a lot, a lot less rich, you know. Yeah. But he does like it because he's louder than everybody else, and that's important. So have you talked to our our boy? Uh, uh, Alan? I talked to him earlier today. Uh, yeah. One of your regular listeners who doesn't get on the show is a friend of ours, and he came and hung my first flat screen TV in my bedroom today. And he does but you've never had a flat screen TV. No, no, Wait. it's sad. I'm the monitor I'm looking into now is flat, but. I've never had a flat screen TV. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Then you, the TV set you must have must be 10 years old. At least. 22. 20. You want it? I'll send it to you. Yeah, I, sure. I had a 20-year-old flat screen TV I just got rid of. Don't yeah. send it collect, by the way, because I'm not picking up the freight on that. Yeah, no shit. How big, how big was it? 
I have a 20 inch Panasonic, still work good, but the trouble is I can't watch Netflix. And if I don't want to get out of bed, I can't watch the Alex Bennett show like I'm on right now. Yeah, so you got you so you got you got yourself a flat screen. And and how big is that one? Fifty inches, fifty five inches. Fifty five, like yeah, that fifty five is fine. I have that's what I have in the guest room here. Um But I was thinking of see, I would change the one I have in the bedroom to make Marjorie happy. I'd go out and get like a an eighty five inch, all right? The only problem is the one we have in the bedroom is 3D, and they don't make them anymore. Really? Yeah. Do you have to wear glasses to to watch it? Yeah, but they're the as opposed to the flicker glasses that were the ones that they uh, uh, they, it was, they were called active glasses that would flicker. This is uh, you just take any of the glasses you get in a movie theater and put them on, and mm. it's fine. It looks great. You know, it looks wow. terrific. But they stopped making them. One day, they don't, oh, well, we're not going to make them anymore. Well, to, Can you to, watch it without the 3D glasses? What do you mean, watch TV set? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I have to turn on the 3D in order for it to work. But oh, the thing uh, was that to put 3D in these TV sets didn't cost them a fortune. You know, it was very cheap, especially with the active glasses. It just you know, flutters between two different signals and synchronize them with the glasses that were electronic. The other ones, you had to have a slightly a certain polarization on the screen or something, but it didn't cost them that much to make it either. But they just stopped making them. You can't buy a 3D uh, TV set anymore. The what only thing you can get is 3D. Went well, the, only thing the way you... of the laser disc. Hmm? They went the way of the laser disc. I think. They showed up I have one of left. those too. If anybody wants one of those? But, but I've enjoyed. You know, I really enjoy watching some of the three D films at home. It's, it's, you know, the the uh, p uh, passive version that I have, that LG did, uh, was as good as you could get. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, they didn't have to stop making them, but they did. And the only way you can get three D TV anymore is if you go out and get a, a projector. A video projector most of them still have the ability to do 3d like the ones you hang from your ceiling no I mean you know it's, it's a screen okay as opposed to uh, you know a flat you know a, a LED screen or whatever but it, okay. it's uh, so I I just I because I when I was a kid I loved 3d I went to every 3d movie there was I was a 3d geek did, and, you, did you have one of those uh, uh, 3D uh, projectors that you that you would click because there there were two images? Oh, you, you're talking about a ViewMaster uh, that you would oh, then yeah. rotate. I, yeah. I still have one in the garage. Yeah, ViewMaster. Yeah. Uh, do they still view make Master. them today? I don't know if they do anymore. I don't think so. And then there, was, they, so then there was one that was really good called a True View, that you actually got a reel of film and you threaded it through it and you could go from two frames to two frames to two frames and it took about 36 frames on a, on a roll and you got some great 3D. Yeah. Um, but I was a big 3D freak when I was a kid. I learned how to draw in 3D by taking a green pencil and a red pencil and then tape and then with the rubber band, sharpening them up with the rubber band, uh, putting them, uh, putting the two pencils together at an angle, and, yeah. Yeah, no, no, and then so they came out this way. And then as I would draw, if I wanted to come out, I would just change the width of the two pencils. And I was able to draw in 3D. Yeah, they have, the Amazon's got tons of these view masters with the little round mm. thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. No. They were they, They're they, mainly they, meant for kids now. Oh, yeah. But after you, after you drew the image with the two colors, did you did you need to wear glasses? Oh, then you so need to wear the anaglyph glasses, yeah. which were green and red. Right. But I could literally draw a straight line that came right out of the page, and went wow. into the page. Yeah, I thought that up myself. Well, anyway, that's what a big freak I was for three D. So now I had that. Huh? What? No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I had cataract surgery in, in twenty nineteen, and uh, after what what happens is is after the both eyes are done but but like six weeks apart mm -hmm. um and 
when you come home and you take the bandage off, uh, uh, one eye is looking this way and the other eye is looking that way, and it takes a while for them to get back in sync. Yeah. Uh, after the second eye, uh, it, they, they were they were getting back in sync, but they were just slightly off, so that I could look at an iPhone and it would be in 3D. <laughs> really? My uh, wife is going through yeah. that right now. She's she just had one eye done last week, and she's getting the other di- eye done on Wednesday next week. Yeah, and she's going through all that, and then she's actually having a lens put in her eyeball. Yeah, so she doesn't have to wear contacts now. Right. Well, she's actually gonna putting be... permanent lenses put in there. It, it's, it's not. It's not a cor- It's not a corneal lens. It's like a permanent lens. Just it's a permanent lens that goes into the. It's eyeball. not a corneal yeah, lens yeah. because that's what they're doing with the. Uh, I have no idea. Well, the operation... All I know is that they put a freaking lens in her eyeball and. Oh, wait, 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 so now she doesn't have to wear, you know, contacts. Oh. And uh, she's got super bad eyes. I mean, like. It, Thirteen diopters. I had I in, had both my in eyes. Theory, she doesn't have to wear contacts. After her eyes settled down, she <clears> may <throat> need reading glasses or something. Yeah. She might need yeah, yeah. She might need, but they're not thirteen diopters. Well, no. I, I had both oh, my wow. I had both That's my yeah. eyes done. She's basically, I had yeah, both exactly. my, both my eyes Ooh. done. And they put a what they do is they take out the cornea and they put in a new lens. I think that's what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. And yeah. They, they do it one week, and then two weeks later they do it again. Yep. Yeah. And, yep. and you know, I and did them about a year apart some, because that the other eye didn't get ripe. They say we have to wait till it gets ripe. You know? Yeah, and then sometime in December she's getting PRK to fine tune it or something. Yeah, and she'll be taking that. around three thousand drops, eye drops. Oh yeah, she's been doing gallons of that stuff. Well, it, well, you have to for for the first week or so you have to use the drops. Yeah, she's been That's doing it. four every yeah. three and hours or something. And some then Usually antibiotic drops and steroid drops that keep. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. Yeah. And then she yeah. has some glaucoma ones to take pressure off. The other day, she, they a, poked a, her eyeball. A, 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 and shit came out of the eyeball too. Bubbles, Bubbles is having that operation in about a week, and he's all upset about it. So I said, "Don't." I said, "It's the easiest thing in the world." It's crazy how easy it is. Yeah, but, and but, in the but old days. But hmm? understand that that of course he, I was incredibly appre- apprehensive before the first one. Because I didn't know what was going to happen, mm-hmm. and and after yeah. the first one, when you realize that it's painless, um, and and it's a miracle that uh, this is the first time in my life that I have twenty twenty vision. I've never had. That's it the thing. Yeah. yeah, she's she's been like this since she was six years old. Right. So and after now she's going to walk around like this. It's like I I told her when she was talking about doing it. I said, "You deserve this shit. Do it." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So after Bubbles' first surgery, he'll be okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I told. I was him. scared. I, because, I told you know they're messing with eyeballs. Well, they, crazy. They, what are they doing? They're going in there and they're cutting out a cornea they're out of your flaps. eyeball. Uh, yeah. And and you think about well, gee, that's got to hurt. No, they put in numbing stuff in your eye. You don't feel a damn thing. The only thing. Yeah, is, they did that in the in the doctor's office the other day. She said, "Oh, you've got a lot of pressure in your eyeball. We're going to pierce it." I'm going, "What the hell are you going to do?" And she went in there, numbed the eyeball, and then. Tina didn't see it, but I saw it, and they took this pin and they went in right in there and poked it, and out come all the crap oh. and relieved the pressure. Wow! Because she was getting like she was at twenty-two, the pressure was twenty-two, and they had to relieve the it pressure. Just quickly, I, I did this once as a uh, as a trick when I was when I, I learned this trick. Actually, I learned this from Penn Jillette. It's a little, little thing you can do if you're out at a restaurant and they've got some little cups of creamer on the on. The, just take a cup of creamer and just palm it in your hand like this and say, look what I can do. And then you take a fork or a knife and you just poke the <laughs> uh, the uh, creamer and it comes spurting out and people yeah. think you just punctured your eye. <laughs> look, so, I'm a zit. Thank you, friend. Yeah. Your eye and, has and, a and, and, and I don't know why anybody, everybody thinks that whatever the juice is that will come out of your eye is white. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's clear. Anyway, I'm playing like the John theme. Belushi. I'm playing the theme. You know, we started out with how to hardly anybody, and now we're here with a lot of everybody's. And, uh, it Sucks really, for you. You couldn't go home. I couldn't go <laughs> home, and it's a uh, really nice show. Thank you so much, Brian, for being here. And once again, thanks for the T-shirt. Uh, I don't want you to think I didn't appreciate it. Uh, and uh, thank you so much uh, 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 to Alan and to Kevin and to Tony 
and to his best friend Ray, and to Don Geller <laughs> as well. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There they go. All right. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll um, have another citizen panel again tomorrow night. Uh, there'll be another one right now over at the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop, which follows immediately after this program. See you again tomorrow night. Yes, right here in Broadcasting Central at GabNet. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow at, uh, let's see here, 10.30. Okay, meet right back here at 10.30. Okay, and uh, in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye-bye, everybody.